Let me have you to open your Bibles, please, to the book of Matthew, chapter 6. Matthew, chapter 6. And I'm going to call your attention to one verse there, verse 34. Matthew 6, and verse 34. The Lord Jesus says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I want to talk to you about the evils of this life, the evils of the world you live in, and so I call this Pastor Shribe's evil sermon. Pastor Shribe's evil sermon. The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, verse 23. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3, verse 10. We read, uh, all we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. Isaiah 53, and verse 6. In other words, men do what they want to do without regard to rules or propriety or decency or morality or public safety or kindness or aid and assistance to other people without regard to pity or to charity or compassion. There's something in the hearts of men and women too that rebels itself against the will of God and the desire of God to do right, to live right. <clears throat> Bob Jones Sr.'s famous uh, dictum was the, the, the two greatest words in the English language are the words, do right. Those words carry a lot of power to them. Uh, but the Bible doesn't say men are incapable of doing any good. Otherwise, the scriptures wouldn't admonish us uh, so often to do right and to obey God if you were incapable of doing so. But men don't always do good. They don't always, uh, or rather, they don't only do good. Let me say it that way. The nature of man wants to satisfy its own lusts, its own interests first, and then think about someone else second. Alongside the virtuous, sinless life of the Lord Jesus Christ, the best person you know is evil. Alongside his goodness, the very best person you've ever known or will ever know is evil next to him. And um, in our text, Jesus said, Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So I call this Pastor Shribe's evil sermon. Point number one, let me say this. Mankind is evil. The Lord Jesus came right out with it. Luke 11 verse 13. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Believers, <clears throat> excuse me, and unbelievers alike want much the same thing, or, or many of the same things in life. They want to live at peace with their neighbors. They want to enjoy the pleasures and the comforts that they can enjoy in the world. To have some sense of achievement, some sense of accomplishment to their record one day. They want their children and their, their grandchildren to grow up to be happy and uh, safe and productive members of society. Everybody wants those things, whether you're a saved uh, person or an unsaved person. But the Word of God says that, that despite those aspirations, Men are evil. As I say, <clears throat> men are capable of doing good. They are capable of doing a lot of good in the world. But never enough good to gain entry into heaven. That's how high God's standard is. And uh, because, because fundamentally, they are evil in the eyes of God. And people don't want to admit that. They don't want to consider that that prospect. But men are evil. Secondly, let me say this. Their heart is evil. Their heart is evil. 
Christ taught, for from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. Mark 7, verses 23 to 21 to 23. People don't like to be told or reminded that they have a wicked heart. They're not fooling anybody. Uh, we assume that other people are going to be just as sneaky and just as conniving as we are. We, if we know ourselves, we know where we're going to try to cut a corner, we're trying to cheat the system, try to get, get from point A to, to point uh, Z and skip the other 24 uh, letters in the alphabet. We think we can do that and uh, achieve great success and prosperity in life and uh, kind of cheat along the way. And so we naturally assume the next guy is going to be as dishonest as we are. And you know what? We're right. The next guy is going to be just like you. But he knows you're going to be just like him too. So don't, don't fool yourself. Men's hearts are evil. Jeremiah 17 verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? There's a common theme, <clears throat> and it's reiterated by, by politicians and people in the public eye, that it's easier to ask for forgiveness than for permission. Do what you want to do right now and then apologize for it later. You don't have to uh, control yourself, control your wants and your impulses and, and say, no, I'm not going to do that right now because that would be wrong. Go ahead and do it and then apologize for it later. And today we live in a world where we have a, not just in the United States, South Korea, France, England, other countries, we have an, a, a willing news media that is happy to gloss over someone's sins, somebody's crimes, and their faults, and their flaws, and their imperfections, and their corruption, uh, because it'll further their career, it'll further somebody's socialistic agenda. But um, do it now and apologize for it later. That seems to be lurking in the hearts of our leaders in the world today. But not only are they called evil, their hearts are also evil. Point number three today is this. Man's nature is evil. His nature is evil. Turn, if you will, to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. And I'm going to read verses 1 through 3. 1, 2, and 3. Ephesians 2, beginning with verse 1. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Before coming to Jesus Christ, a sinner is governed only by the, the impulses and the wants of his flesh, the nature of his flesh. And that nature is said to be evil in the eyes of God. There's a book titled Under Western, Under Western Eyes, written back, back in 1911. And the author of that book's name was Joseph Conrad. And he wrote, quote, The belief in a supernatural source of evil is not necessary. Men alone are capable of every wickedness. And he's very right about that. Don't blame everything like Flip Wilson used to do in the 70s. You guys aren't old enough to remember that. But he'd say, the devil made me do it. No, you did it. You're to blame for your sin. You're to blame for your disobedience. You're to blame for your rebellion against God. Oh, <clears throat> I think the devil's the, ins the, the inspiration for the wickedness and the evil that men do. And he wants you to stumble and fall as often as he can make you stumble and fall. But ultimately, you're going to have to answer for the way you live or the way you rebel against God. So while um, 
a man may not be capable of doing good all the time, uh, his capacity to do evil seems to know no limits. And strange as it seems to us, the fact that men are evil and able to carry out great evil without much help, for some people that's proof that there is no devil, that he's not necessary. No, he's not necessary because you have a fallen nature inside of you, but uh, he's certainly there to help. He's certainly there to help it along the way. But point number four today is this. <clears throat> His world is evil. Man's world is evil. Galatians 1 verse 4 says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. The world you live in offers plenty of opportunity to sin every day, doesn't it? Can't you go through the day and find some way, no matter where you turn, no matter where you look, to do what's wrong, which would be dishonoring to the Lord Jesus Christ, whether it's goofing off on the job, whether it's cheating at school, rebelling against your mother and father, uh, arguing with your husband and wife if you're married, cussing out somebody, even if you're driving and you don't say it out loud, but you're cussing out that guy that cut you off without indicator. How many of us have ever done that? Come on now, all of your hands better be up. You used to have this little thing, I saw it in a, in a toy store years ago. It was a little you know, toggle switch on a piece of plastic and just mount it on your dashboard. <clears throat> and when somebody would cut you off in traffic, that, that it was labeled rocket launcher. I just flip the switch, you know, and so you sort of get your frustrations out, for that guy in the, uh, <laughs> who cut you off. I mean, there's no rocket, obviously, but it was a, it was a way of, of getting your vengeance out uh, in, in jest. But the world you live in offers more than enough chances to sin every day. Lusting, sending dirty text messages, looking at stuff on the internet or television you know you shouldn't look at. It's a wonder if people get anything done that's productive with as much sin that's available to them during the day. But the world around you is a one constant non-stop invitation to sin because the world itself is evil. Point number five, his God is evil. Man's God is evil. <clears throat> but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 3 and 4. Satan leads men to think that they can get to heaven any other way but by the Lord Jesus Christ and through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. I heard a Roman Catholic priest at a funeral once say that if you're here, you're, you're not a Catholic, don't try to act like we do with a standing, sitting, kneeling, and so forth. Don't, just relax. There's only one God, but many ways to get to him. You never heard a more idiotic statement by someone in the name of Jesus Christ in your life. It was the Lord Jesus himself who said, I am the way, the truth, and life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Some guy who says he's a, the uh, representative of Christ, the local vicar of some church, in the name of Jesus Christ, saying there's more than one way to God? Well, evidently, that guy hasn't figured out which way that is yet. People imagine that God is the great architect of the universe, the master mason, He's the divine light, the infinite source, the great spirit, the cosmic presence, uh, and a host of other strange descriptions. Satan's doctrine <clears throat> is do whatever you want to do, believe, believe whatever you want, and don't worry about it. Everybody's going to go to heaven. I have heard ministers 
supposed Christian ministers say those exact words at funerals. That I believe a loving father who loves his children will never turn any of his children away when they come to him one day after death. Baloney. The Lord Jesus said to some people uh, about some people, many shall say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have done uh, many miracles and cast out devils and many wonderful works. Then will I say unto them, <clears throat> Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. <clears throat> I heard a woman give a eulogy for her mother at a funeral. And um, she said, I know my mom's in heaven now, enjoying margaritas with our Lord Jesus Christ. She meant every word of it. Well, maybe dad's also in heaven with looking at dirty magazines with Ted Kennedy. The truth is, Ted's not there, so dad's probably not there either. The God of an evil man with an evil heart, who has an evil nature, living in an evil world, that man's God is going to be evil. The believer will find... He always has three enemies to contend with, the world, the flesh, and the devil. And uh, those things are evil. Point number six, my last point today, about man. He speaks evil of the truth. He likes to speak evil of the truth. At least the Word of God says that he does. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. 2 Peter 2, verse 2. It's sad how much crass and crude, vulgar talk is spewed forth by stand-up comics and Hollywood entertainers, talk show hosts, and even some uh, politicians on occasion, mocking Jesus Christ, mocking the scriptures, mocking the way to heaven by the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> they have no love for decency, no love for virtue, no love for holiness, no love for goodness, no love for honesty, no love for um, uh, obedience. At least, not as they're found and laid out for us in the Word of God. I'm going to start to bring this to a close, but one politician said this just several years ago. Whatever we were as a nation, we no longer are a Christian nation. At least, not just. We are also a Jewish nation, and a Muslim nation, and a Buddhist nation, and a Hindu, and a Hindu nation, and a nation of non-believers. And even if we did have only Christians, if we expelled all non-Christians, whose Christianity would we teach in the schools? Would it be James Dobson's or Al Sharpton's? Which passages should guide our public policy? Should we go with Leviticus, which suggests that slavery is okay and that eating shellfish is an abomination? Or we could go with Deuteronomy, which suggests stoning your child if he strays from the faith? Or should we just stick with the Sermon on the Mount? And then he said, democracy demands that the religiously motivated, those are Christians with great conviction, the religiously motivated, translate their concerns to universal rather than religion-specific values. In other words, <clears throat> it's wrong for anyone to say that Jesus Christ is the only way to get to God or to heaven. It's wrong for someone to say that the Bible is the inerrant word of God and that every other way which seemeth right unto a man is going to turn out to be the ways of death. It's wrong to say that. And this person thought he was being real funny. He got a lot of laughs from the audience and uh, undoubtedly a lot of uh, agreement by people watching it on YouTube over the years. And he seemed to suggest that the majority of Americans no longer identify themselves as Christians or that, the New, or that New Testament Christians are hypocrites because we don't go back and put ourselves under some Old Testament dietary rules. According to a Wikipedia article, Jews, Muslims, Buddhists, and Hindus, and atheists combined 
make up only about 3.5% of the population of the United States. 80% of Americans still consider themselves some kind of a Christian. I realize that's a broad definition, but 80% of Americans still identify themselves as some kind of Christian. And the name of that politician who thought he was being clever and funny was then Senator Barack Hussein Obama. You can find that on the internet. That was at a speech he gave June 28th. 2006. Barack Obama is a lost, unsafe politician on his way to hell. He wasn't that bright of a, he wasn't that smart of a president either. He was a fluke. He was a novelty. He was an oddity in the political sphere. That's why he got elected. Let's hope we never make that mistake again. But the but the Bible's assessment of unregenerated man is that he is evil, his heart is evil, he's born with an evil nature, he's trapped in an evil world, his very God is evil, and he can't help but speak evil of the truth. Romans 3.23 states, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. If all have sinned, then all need to be forgiven. If I were to tell you to <clears throat> go get a piece of paper, I want you to take a note for me, and you came back with something like this, you would say, I can't use that. It's, it's smudged. It's got a dirty mark on it. And I would say, well, there's plenty of space around here. You can write the note somewhere else. You wouldn't like it. You're expecting something like this without any marks on it, right? It doesn't matter how much sin a person has committed, a little or a lot, it still makes you dirty in the eyes of God. It still makes you unclean. And only the blood of Jesus Christ can wash away that sin. Only the saving grace and the mercy of the Lord Jesus can cleanse a guilty soul from the consequence of its sin and the guilt of its sin. I'm so grateful that the Lord Jesus carried my burden up to Mount Calvary and laid on a cross and was crucified for my sake, died for my sins, and died for your sins. And he died for the sins of the whole world. And uh, no one but the Lord Jesus Christ could have borne the judgment of God on behalf of the entire planet. But he did. It's hard to wrap your mind around that. Our brains are incapable of fully comprehending all that that uh, means. But it's nevertheless true that the Lord Jesus Christ suffered on my behalf. He was bearing the, the pain or the, the weight of my sin and absorbing the judgment of God for my sin uh, on, on, in my place. So that when I come to God as a sinner, admitting my need of forgiveness, the righteousness of Jesus Christ having already died in my place, the righteousness and the merit of his death is then credited to me. My sins have been washed clean. And my guilt is then put upon him. And there's no, there's no difficulty with time and space. It can happen any time. And a great spiritual transaction takes place between the sinner and the Savior. And um, I know I, I may say that a lot. I might phrase it that way quite often. But it's worth repeating. Um, but to them that are saved, it, the gospel, is the power of God, the Bible says. 